So in looking at who we screen against, um, there's a number of different agencies involved. We have Department of State, Department of Commerce, Treasury Department, and then again, we always have these foreign government lists that I want you to consider, but given the, the time today, um, we're only going to speak about the, uh, the primary U.S. list. And there are um, over 100 lists, really, that you could screen against. Um, but for most exporters, and certainly those of us in the United States, there are 11 critical lists that you must consider. And these are the lists that I have listed here. So let's uh, just briefly go into a little bit about these. Um, many of you know uh, what these lists are. You've heard about them, but they, they all have a sort of a different context within the regulatory framework. So first, within the uh, Department of State, we have the Bureau of uh, International Security and Nonproliferation, and they have the nonproliferation sanctions list, which are essentially parties that have been sanctioned under various uh, statutes, various laws or executive orders. And as the name implies, it has to do with uh, parties involved in proliferation activities. That is proliferation of chemical or biological weapons, proliferation of rocket or missile technologies, or unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, various things of that nature. Uh, next, we have the uh, Arms Export Control Act debarred list, or AECA debarred list. And this includes entities and individuals prohibited from participating directly or indirectly in the export of defense articles. And that also includes uh, the export of technical data and the performance of defense services. So again, this is uh, something that's promulgated through the Arms Export Control Act. And for those of you that are operating in the, uh, in the uh, defense article space, you know, in the military sector, defense and aerospace, uh, these sanctions uh, and lists would certainly be applicable to you. Um, and we also have the, um, uh, let's see, within the, uh, where are we now? On the Department of Commerce list. Okay, sorry. Uh, the denied persons list or what was previously known as a denied parties list. And I still slip and occasionally call it denied parties list, but it is the denied persons. And uh, these are individuals that have been denied export privileges. And as the, the name implies, uh, any dealings with any party on this list would likely violate the terms of the denial order. Um, and the denial orders, you know, when you get a hit for somebody on this, you need to read it closely because they often include words like, you know, this denied party or the name of the company and their heirs, assigns, and uh, you know any parties exporting or acting on behalf of the denied person. And this is one of the reasons why we suggest, and we'll get into this in more detail, but why we suggest that you screen your partners to an export transaction, because you could be acting on behalf of a denied person and they're sitting behind the scenes and you're really acting as the exporter on, on their behalf. So it's important to, to know all of the parties to the transaction and screen them accordingly. Next, under the Department of Commerce, we have the unverified list. And these are uh, end users who the BIS, Bureau of Industry and Security, uh, has been unable to verify in prior transactions. And uh, they do uh, end use checks. Um, those of you, some of you may have had that, uh, have been involved with those where you export something and then there's a, a PSV or post shipment verification that takes place where there's actually somebody from Office of Export Enforcement or somebody from another agency of the US government that goes out on site and verifies that the parts that you exported uh, are actually there and that they're at the company that you sent them to or that they're using them or integrating them into their products um, and that they haven't just turned around and re-exported them illegally to another country. Um, and and uh, you want to make sure that you are looking at all the parties to the transaction on the export side as well, because there could be parties involved there that you may not be aware of. So make sure you ask your customers, you know, who are these products going to uh, and, and what other parties are involved in the transaction. Uh, and then the thirdly, under the uh, Department of Commerce list, we have the entity list, which are persons believed to be involved uh, or posing a significant risk of being involved in act activities that would be contrary to the national security or the foreign policy of the United States. Under the Treasury Department, uh, there's a number of different lists here, 
Uh, the one that most of us are familiar with is the SDN list or the specially designated nationals list. And this list uh, contains parties who may be prohibited from export transactions based on various OFAC regulations. Um, there's also the foreign sanctions uh, evaders list, and that includes foreign individuals um, that were entities that have been determined to have violated or attempted to violate um, U.S. sanctions on Syria and Iran, as well as foreign persons who have facilitated deceptive transactions for or behalf of persons who are subject to U.S. sanctions. Um, next is the Sectoral Sanctions Identifications List, or SSI list. Um, this is a more recent one. Uh, this is in the news that most of us would remember. We, we, in fact, we hear it in the news regularly about sanctions on Russia, right, and Ukraine. And so the SSI list includes individuals operating in sectors of the Russian economy uh, with whom U.S. persons are prohibited from transacting business with or financing or dealing in debt. Um, with a maturity of longer than 90 days. The SSI also includes um, uh, uh, restrictions on uh, exports involving the exploration or production of deep water, Arctic offshore, or shale projects that uh, have the potential to produce oil in the Russian Federation. Uh, so if you're in the uh, oil and gas industry or if your products are supporting that and you're selling into Russia, make sure that you're screening against the SSI list. Um, there's also the Palestinian Legislative Council list, the PLC list, the list of foreign financial institutions subject to Part 561, also known as the 561 list. And uh, lastly, there's the non-SDN Iranian Sanctions Act list, the NSISA. So these are the, the critical 11 lists you want to make sure that you're screening against. Um, Again, there are foreign government lists, and there are um, there are other lists that may be applicable to the transactions uh, that you're involved with. So make sure that you're considering those in your screening activities. 